spent £100 million on its association with the Olympics. So it's the official partner, also sponsors Team GB, but then the other sportswear brands are getting on it as well. So Nike sponsors Team US, and Puma sponsors Usain Bolt. But together between those three companies, nearly 2 million people in largely developing countries actually work in their supply chains producing their goods. I'm sure this is a story many of you will have heard before, but sadly it has not gone away. So of those 2 million people, their entire economic relationship is based purely on exploitation. Uh, on the whole, they are rarely if ever given sufficient pay to live on. Uh, the minimum wage in most of the countries in which they operate uh, is not sufficient to live on, and in, most, and in many cases people aren't even paid the legal minimum wage. Um, and none of them will officially commit uh, to providing a living wage as in the actual cost of course to live. Um, so as a result, both adults and usually uh, another member of the family have to work in order to sustain a household. Uh, we found workers working 14 to 16 hours a day, seven days a week, in some cases working well over 100 hours in a week without days off. Um, uh, female workers suffer repeat sexual discrimination, <coughs> harassment and abuse, and some of the factories where we visited Every single worker reported being beaten, slapped, harassed, uh, and in many cases having other forms of punishment like being locked in rooms, extended periods of time, being denied access to toilets, or being locked in toilets as punishment for failing to achieve production targets, which just cannot be achieved within legal working limits. So in order to try and achieve this goal of being an ethical Olympics, the London Olympics said that all of them had to stand up to the uh, ethical trading initiative set high standards, well, no, pathetically low standards, but standards nonetheless, for, for labour in their sorts of companies. But this only applies to the supply chains. There's been no implementation, and the complaints mechanism, which is supposed to be one of the key ways that working, is so far only in English, and has only been given to Nike, Adidas, and Puma, which doesn't really give a lot of chance for the workers in Bangladesh to actually complain. Um, but also, more broadly, this is part of the problem where multinational corporations aren't legally liable the actions of their suppliers, the people that actually make everything that they sell. They can escape accountability because it's possible for the suppliers to actually legally employ these people. And also, they can shift production as labour costs rise. So if workers organise in a factory, they can just cease production there and close the factory. And most of the staff themselves are on precarious short-term contracts, which makes it hard for them to organise because they're at continual risk of not having their contract renewed. So we're campaigning fundamentally for improvements in company practices that actually respect workers' rights, provide minimum basic standards, and also for locals to actually meet its fantastic PR spin that's put on all of this about being an ethical and actually ensure that that is delivered. But also, more fundamentally, it's about making sure multinational companies are actually held to account for the impact they're at their supply chains, because they have such a central role in actually dictating the terms for all these companies, and they claim they have no liability whatsoever for conditions which are causing goods to be more happy.